Hello, this is just a short follow-up video to a conversation, or I suppose it was a debate that I had yesterday on Andy Waski's channel with alt-right thought leader uh, Mike Enoch. Mike Enoch runs a website called The Daily Shower, which is apparently a parody of The Daily Show, except using the word shower, which means holocaust. Great. I was on Andy Waski's show with his co-host, JF, who I would say is definitely sympathetic to the alt-right. Bronx blogger who is an Antifa sympathizer slash member and Kevin Logan who was there very briefly who just showed up uh lobbed a few bombs and then that was it yeah I mean I missed a lot of the conversation so I can't really wrap up as such um I just thought it was interesting that Mike you know he's a terrorist apologist that's that was something that's come <laughs> so out of this discussion. A real honest statement right there very and uh, uh, who's Denying okay with the murder of what people are saying their left wing hey look I, I think the conversation will speak for itself you know I guess we don't need to put Yes. I love the fact this guy's got nothing but little snarky fucking passive aggressive little side comments it's all this guy's brings to the fucking table the whole time Kevin do some substance go do some more, do some more. go for it pal do some more little snarky side fucking passive aggressive shit let's hear it pal let's go okay Mike just relax oh, well, your butthurt is so tasty to me. It's delicious. There you go. Okay, Kevin. Oh, I shouldn't be butthurt. You just did it again. You just did it again. Stop that. Again, go for it. Let's do it again. Come on, let's Jesus. call all night. Let's keep going, pal. What, what's yeah, more? What else? What I'm like? Am I, am, I triggered? am I triggered? Snowflake next? Come on, pal. Let's hear it. Let's hear all the little guys. <laughs> Who's seen a little bit triggered? What's up your fucking sleep, pal? Who's quite triggered? Okay, I don't there think Kevin can do the final yeah, statement. You know what? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's and I, add, uh, Mike. Over the course of this debate, we discussed a number of things. Uh, criticism of my debate performance, I definitely said like and you know too fucking much, and it's really irritating. That's some kind of uh, verbal tick that I need to work on. When I'm in a more formal setting of debating, it's very different to me than when I am making a video like this. When I'm talking to the camera like this, I find it quite easy to formulate my thoughts, and I sit and think for a little while, and then I stick an edit in there, and it's a lot easier. But in a more formal setting or conversational setting, especially on a channel that has a lot of viewers or attention, it's really hard to not fill in the space with things like like, you know, like, like, I mean, this is completely superficial, but listening back to the conversation, I was just irritated that I said fucking like and you know so goddamn much. You know, like, the way that you, like, try to say that whiteness is a certain concept, like, that is, like, really, like, important to, like, the, like, ethno state, you know? Like, ah, fuck. So that's something I gotta work on. Besides that superficial thing. Impressions of Mike Enoch, I think that he clearly had his sort of talking points and his ideas down very clearly. I think Richard Spencer actually goes off on more sort of existential kind of philosophical tangents and goes more into kind of like abstract weeds. Whereas Mike Enoch, I think, has this particular spiel of thought processes about historical factoids, about like, these people weren't considered white back in the day, or these people were considered white in this country. And, and this kind of imperialism occurred in Africa, but in Africa, there was also white people on their farms being destroyed in Zimbabwe and the 1924 Naturalization Immigration Act said this about Slavs blah 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 blah. He's got all of his talking points down really clearly. And it's a little bit difficult because you get lost in the weeds uh, really quickly. I'm, I'm just I get lost in a blizzard of words there. Just about random factoids and pieces of information whereas the thing that really matters to me is talking about this fucking white ethno state and it's his aspiration it's his ideal it's the same ideal with richard spencer and how the hell is it going to work how does it make sense how is it going to solve the world's problems how is it a coherent ideology and lowest points i think no matter how much the outright people waffle around on their like philosophy and factoids and appeals to science and empirical data that when you actually read you find is far more nuanced and complicated or it's been kind of massaged through their ideological standpoint and manipulated by biased actors to appear to back up their point of view and you can get into methodology of studies and and all this you know all of these weeds that at the end of the day as a progressive i think the thing that is most important are those practical concerns and when you watch progressive shows like tyt or david pakman or even Carl Kalinske, I'm not a huge fan, but Sam Cedar, for example, Michael Brooks, they talk a lot about practical, real-world policies, how they impact people, and their implications and what they mean. And the alt-right can't fucking do that. They can't do that. They can only talk about, oh, we'll pay people and we'll provide incentives for them to just go back to, as Donald Trump would say, it, their shithole of a country. Maybe you'll have some limited success of trying to bribe and pay people money. And somebody pointed out, you know, paying people money to leave the country is on the taxpayers' backs. Um, just to get rid of these certain people, but I guess with the right ideology, handouts uh, are a good thing. And a lot of alt-righters talk about how they are socially minded or inclined um, without immediately adding for white people 
and nobody else. That besides a few things like that, they cannot point out how this would practically make sense, except trying to point to Israel and Japan as their ultimate examples of a so-called ethnostate, and I would say those are both very complicated and nuanced examples because Japan for 300 years was an ethnostate and it was completely closed off, and I would say 300 years of isolation has actually had a negative impact on them in numerous ways, and they are declining as a world power, although obviously it's still a developed nation. And Israel is an interesting example because Richard Spencer has talked in the past of like peaceful ethnic cleansing, but Israel Israel was formed in anything but a peaceful manner and there's a lot of fucking problems in Israel. It's got its positives and it's got its pluses. Israel just had a new political uh, progressive victory on HIV AIDS and they allow for gay communities and they allow for multi-ethnic communities but they're also besieged by political and historical problems many of which have resulted in and continue to result in ongoing bloodshed and violence. I don't see how the idea of ethnostate and homeland and the ethnic place for the Jewish people actually is helping very much with those particular problems. And exporting that so-called ethnostate model, because, I mean, they would still have to clarify exactly what they mean by that, to other places like the United States and Europe is going to be fraught with a fuck ton of problems. And it's when you try to get into those details and try to get into those problems that somebody like Mike Enoch gets super fucking flustered. And when you ask him about what is white, he just flew off the handle and he kind of discombobulated. Do you have any sources on this? I mean, white for the purpose uh, yeah, of the that's national So that's, there you go. Oh, no, I'm just reading from the wiki, which is sourced yeah. from Harvard. No, and then it says, because it goes on, their social standing was that they represented a problem at best. There, And so I guess they, they were in a middle okay. ground, kind of, I mean, I suppose. all right, I but know. white for the purposes of naturalization. So there you go. Right, so it, that de then depends how we're defining white. So white is then like, you know, if they are recognized. Doing this again. Yeah, well, this, I, this, I don't believe, this, this, I don't believe that people don't against. know what a white person is. I just don't <laughs> no, know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, but, so, yeah, let's, not get, let's not get bogged down in it. Yeah, no, no, let's no. not get bogged down in that Everyone question because we'll be here all night. This is bullshit. No, no, no. But it's definitely a problem if we're going to talk about like no, some kind of problem. Thing. It's it a, has problem. To be a problem. It's a problem if you want to nitpick and, and, and you know split every hair into sixteen parts. Then it's a problem. It's not really. If you want, if you want to nitpick how the entire system you advocate works, then sort of. The idea of what is white being irrelevant to an ethnostate would be like me saying as a progressive, if you ask me about pay quality, or healthcare, or affirmative action, or even trigger warnings or safe spaces, that every single answer I have for that is just, it's irrelevant, it doesn't matter, my progressive ideology works overall anyways, I don't have to answer these stupid details, it's fucking irrelevant. Nobody would buy that, nobody would agree with that, they'd say that's not an answer, that is not a satisfactory backup for an ideology, that is empty. You're gonna have to do better than that. But I think when Mike Enoch does it, his fans, for some bizarre reason, are like, Mike Enoch nailed it. He fucking crushed it. He destroyed them. When he started screaming about it, it doesn't matter what white is, that was a massive victory. How does that work? And I found that Andy's comment section was crammed with alt-writers. And I even messaged Andy to be like, dude, you've got a lot of fucking Nazis in your comments section. And I don't mean Nazis in a flippant way. I mean, the vast majority of the comments were like, Tim's wife is gonna be raped by N-words and I hope he enjoys that. And I'm reading this like, what the fuck? Tim wants to live in his uh, multiracial shithole. I hope he enjoys being raped with a glass bottle. And I'm like, what the hell? What? White people can't self-determine. We need the ethnostate now. We need this place for us. I fucked on a 1488, 1488, 1488, and all of these different Twitterers, I don't know, altright.com and Mr. Altright and the Altright guy and uh, Altright Pepe and all of it was just endless sea of alt-writers. That changed my perspective about the conversation or the debate a little bit because when I was having the conversation, I was just thinking like, this is just some random dude in a room. I don't really know who the fuck he is. You know, I don't really care. He doesn't seem to deal well with questioning. He goes on these like really long spiels, which I guess appeal to his family fan base, they're kind of primed to be like, wow, his talking points are, are so robust and so interesting and so good. But I found it's such like a word blizzard that it's really hard to pick up on random stuff that he said. Like someone said, Britain isn't a nation state. You should have called him out on that. He throws too much shit out there. I can't correct everything. You just get a general idea of the kind of stuff he's saying. Because if you start going into the specifics of each individual thing he says, you're going to get bogged down for fucking ever because it's just a word blizzard of just random things, many of which are um, probably not true. But I mean, that's the difficulty with dealing with these alt-right guys. You know, they're fucking slippery. They're extremely slippery. But I was just approaching it as like a casual conversation. Like, okay, here's this alt-right guy. Maybe he can explain to me how this fucking ethnostate 
networks. Maybe he can provide some historical and political backing about his ideas and how it all works. And, and it was kind of like three on one. And I said to Andy earlier, it'll be unbalanced if you have three lefty people on. And I said that multiple times to Andy and he just insisted. He was like, no, it'll be great. But that did result in a lot of commenters just saying it was unbalanced, it was biased, it was dogpile on Mike Enoch and so forth. They have to get three lefties to take on Mike Enoch and he BTFO'd them, he fucked them up and destroyed them because he's the conqueror and he's the terminator or whatever. But I knew people would see it that way if, he, if it was unbalanced. But Andy uh, is terminally unable to balance his streams politically it's always like way to the right just alt-right hug box or too many lefties i guess he's still working on trying to figure out the middle ground or something and i i warned him about that so i was just trying to like find out more information and i found that he got super flustered eventually and he struggled and he had trouble putting all of those thoughts together into something coherent so eventually he fell back on it's irrelevant it doesn't matter Science tells us this is true. I'm gonna go off on some random tangent about Africa or something. And then all the outright viewers who just crushed, destroy three communists BTFO'd by Mike Enoch. <laughs> Which was hilarious because I'm not a communist in any sense of the word. I mean, I'm literally just not a communist. So that was quite funny. Tim brought nothing to the table. He didn't bring any ideas. He was just empty. And to that I would say, yeah, because I was just questioning, wondering about what Mike Enoch thinks. We weren't talking about my positions or my point of view. We could have gone into progressivism and progressive politics, even though that is really not the forum for it, because I just don't think the viewers or a lot of the people on Andy's channel would be at all interested in what progressives actually think. Uh, so we could go into that if they wanted to get bored talking about taxes and healthcare and shit. But no, the conversation was more about Mike Enoch's views. So it just wasn't, it wasn't focused on what I believe or think. Anyways, the post-debate situation sort of changed my perspective because it made me realize he's not just some dude in a room. He's followed around by this whole massive fan base who sycophantically sucks off every single thing he says and mindlessly and brainlessly attacks and tries to crush and destroy someone like me because I don't believe what they believe and these ideas are extremely precious to them and this whole thing of the white race is really fucking important to these guys and I wasn't treating it with the kind of importance that they treat it with so obviously they're gonna get pretty fucking angry at me. Soy boy, low testosterone and then tons of personal attacks like he's a loser or something and uh, virgin something or other. And I expect that kind of shit but it was just interesting to see how fucking monolithic that stuff was in the comments section and it changed my perspective it made me self-reflect a little bit made me think okay if i do get in more conversations like this i'm gonna have to work a little bit harder i guess sagan of a card had a <laughs> had a similar well not really but you know at least he put on a show of doing some self-reflection or something but but i feel like okay in the future i need to be less sarcastic and less joking because it's just my you know my personal trait is just to be sarcastic and joke around but you know to the audience it's entertaining at the time that they're watching the show and i could see andy laughing and enjoying some of my like snark comments so i was like huh Cool. But that in the post debate, um, it doesn't come off good because they just think he's dismissive or he's not paying attention or he doesn't care about our white ethno state and that hurts our feelings. There I go again. I need to work on my articulation of my ideas. Um, and again, that was like avoiding saying like and you know so much as filler words. And I think it's just a formatting issue, trying to be in conversations that are a bit more balanced and are a bit less people just yelling over each other and in which there's no way for people to get equal time to express their ideas. I definitely found with Mike Enoch, the difficult thing to do with that guy is when he gives an answer, he just goes on and on and on and on and on, which I just checked, yeah, is a gish gallop. So he does a lot of gish galloping, just this factoid, this random factoid, this argument, this random factoid, this piece of information, PS, what you just said is irrelevant and it doesn't matter. And that was just his whole technique. That's what he just did the whole fucking time. And if you pick out one individual piece of his arguments, he will just throw six more random things at you that don't really address your issue with what you brought up. And to the audience that comes off as like some massive win for that guy. So I guess it would be thinking more about what the audience is seeing as opposed to me. When I'm sitting there and I'm getting these six arguments in a row and I pick out one thing and then he says that the thing I picked out was just irrelevant. What I see from my perspective is a man who cannot clearly articulate his point of view and cannot hold up to questioning because he has to deflect. What the audience sees is these five or six points that the guy made are kind of just standing on their own even if they're all scarcely connected at all and it's just putting out that overwhelming amount of information. From my perspective, although I think I could have done better in the conversation uh, for the reasons I've outlined, I really 
just from a personal perspective, you know, not speaking for the audience, just did not get the impression that Mike Enoch's arguments were very coherent. From my perspective, they were all over the fucking place, but, uh, but I know other people said differently. So yeah, that's just some reflections on that conversation. Should have some other videos and projects and things coming up soon. I will probably start an entire new movement of thought based on my positions and views. So watch out for that.